Hello again, I want to touch on the sharing and permissions features here in Google Sites. Very similar to Google Docs and Drive, except the look and feel or the way that you change the sharing features or the sharing settings is slightly different. So the easiest way to get into sharing settings is just to come up to the big blue button in the upper right where it says share. If I hover on this command button, you'll notice that it says public on the web and that this site is set to such. Uh, anyone on the internet can find and access and see this website currently. Usually this this is usually the situation you want or the setting that you want when you want to share with parents and and students um, you know it makes it a little bit easier on use that you don't have to share with individual accounts or ask them to get Google accounts to access it if the parents or uh, your community doesn't have that so public on the web works fine for me in this situation if I click on this command button it'll take me to the managed site page again and specifically on the sharing and permissions page now what you'll see here is of course the link to where I share uh, or excuse me the link to my website um, it's that same convention that we mentioned in an earlier video I also have ways to share via social media and of course Gmail as well but I can post my website from here directly to uh, Google Plus Facebook or Twitter um, directly from this this site here here it is set to public if I didn't want public, if I wanted to keep this as like a, a classroom wiki uh, where your students were using their Google Apps accounts or something like that, the change button here will allow me to do that. And when I click on that, you see that I can change it from public on the web, anyone with the link, or private. If you have a Google Apps account at your district, you may see options on here that say um, share anyone within the organization or your school district organization as well. So it may give you even more features. I'm going to back out here, keep it on public. Uh, you can see that currently I am the only uh, person with uh, owning rights or access rights. But if I wanted to add someone else or another email address as an editor, uh, our Kiker at KikerLearning.com, let's say this was another editor uh, over here on the left, I can give people either editing rights, I can let them become the owner if I want to assign them as the owner of the site, or I can give them just simply viewing rights. So if this was a private site, but you wanted another teacher to have access to it or viewing rights, you could put in their email address and then choose can view and then they could see your site. Maybe you're using it as an internal newsletter tool or uh, a place where you publish weekly lesson plans to share with the staff or any of those options. You can use viewing. Uh, if you wanted others to contribute to the lesson plan sharing or this newsletter, you would add them as editors. So I'll leave, leave this as can edit. Of course, I also had this option, notify people via email. I suggest you always do this if you're working with a, a Google site that is uh, private that you're giving new people access to. But I, when I check this off, I can add a message and everyone that I add as an editor will become, um, will, will receive an email of letting them know that they now have access to this particular uh, website and editing rights or whatever rights you assign to them. Um, thanks for joining. It could be something simple or you can give them more detailed uh, instructions as well. If I choose save and share, You'll notice that this will uh, reset and it will add me as an editor and now I can see both editors uh, on this particular site. If in the future you don't want this person to have access anymore, you can simply click on the X to the right. You've made changes that you need to save. Save those changes and I'm back to my original setup where I was the only, the only editor and the current owner of this website. There is a newer feature in Google Sites known as page level permissions. When I'm working here, I'm giving these users complete access, uh, whether it's editing or viewing rights, to all the individual pages. Excuse me here. To all the individual pages uh, on my Google site. What happens is um, you may have subsequent pages or you may have sub pages on your website that you only want users to have access to that page, not the collection of web pages on your website. Page level permissions allows you to do that. And if you click on this command button, it will give you the information on what page level permissions do. And there's also this really valuable getting started guide that helps a lot if you choose to do this. If you were to click on this, it will take you to that page and give you some more information about why to use page level permissions, how to set them up, and the different, the different permissions. I really find this useful in, in custom situations. It does get a little tricky and it takes a little bit more advanced uh, editing and for you to kind of manage the sites or the site and individual pages closely, uh, but it's but it's very valuable and it's it's great if you uh, 
need that level of customization. I'm just going to navigate back to my, my site here and come back in and come back to my sharing settings. So enable page level permissions is right here if you want to use it. Um, but other than that, the sharing and visibility features are pretty easy to use. And I hope this was helpful and I will see you again soon in another tutorial.